Greetings folks, I'm Will Lombardi and I'm here at Plumas Arts Gallery in uh, Quincy, California with Bruce Titus, our uh, artist for the month of March. Bruce, you're here from, as you say, Sparks, and you started to tell me when I asked what your connection was to Quincy, Quincy, California and this gallery in particular, and you told me you were visiting and you found the gallery. I spend a lot of time on the road. You know, if you want to be a landscape photographer, you got to spend a lot of time out in the landscape. Yeah. So I'm out, you know, making rounds. And about 10 years ago, I was coming through Quincy and I like to stop at art galleries wherever I go. And I get some good ideas and, you know, uh -huh. it's, it's, it's nice to see what other people's creative vision is. So even if it's not landscape? Oh yeah, anything. I don't just do landscape. I do a lot of street yeah. photography. Um, I do some, like, you know, there's an image up here that's strictly done in Photoshop. There's no, no photographs were harmed in the making of that. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so you're sort of all over the place. I'm but all over but the you place. were traveling, you found I guess, this place. Yeah, I just stopped in at one of the galleries, and then I stopped in down here, and there was a lady named Roxanne here, and I got to talking to her, and uh -huh. I said, oh, I like some of these photos and everything. And, and uh, you know, I've got my work in galleries, and you know, can I send you samples of it? And I did, and they liked them, and so I've been, I've had work in the gallery here for, I don't know, probably the last 10 years. I, I recognized, yeah. I feel like I recognized your name, and I, as I pointed out when I came in earlier, there were one or two that I, that mm -hmm. I knew. So you've got a nice relationship with Plumas Arts. Yeah, I've been, I've been here about 10 years, I'd say, uh -huh. off and on. You know, well, I've had, Pretty consistently, I've had at least one or two images in here for the uh -huh. last 10 years. And some of these images were taken nearby, and, and a lot of them weren't. That tree right there is right up in Lakes Basin, which is only like I feel like I recognize that. That's yeah. on the way to Long Lake. Yeah, Lake. Long Lake's up there. In fact, that tree is right up above Long yeah. Lake. That tree's like 100, 200 yards from Long yeah, Lake. Yeah, <laughs> I think I've admired so. that tree. I love it. But what, where else have you photographed besides like Basin in our area? Oh, in the area here, I've gone up through La Porte and all that. Yeah. I've gone, driven down through there and I've driven up through uh, Were you Greenville. taking images of mining artifacts over by La Porte? Or? Whatever I can see, you uh -huh. know. I mean, the, the sky's the limit. I look, you know, depending on what I'm looking at, I. I, I I dabble in, you know, four or five different types of photography. Yeah. So wherever I find myself, I can usually drop back to one of those. To see. Or, or not. So you so. come prepared to collect images. Yeah. You don't know what those images are, and you don't know the medium right. that you are going to use. But something catches your attention. Mm -hmm. you, you pull over and sit with it a while. Sometimes you can get the picture right then and there and sometimes this photograph right here, mm -hmm. I went to that spot I went four times to where that tree is before I finally found the right angle and the right time of day and all that to get that shot. So sometimes <clears throat> photographs take a lot of planning. Yeah. But a lot of times, like this photograph right here, the canoe, I was just out on a you know, photo outing with a photography group and it was around dawn and I walked down by this little lake and boom, there was the picture. There it was. So, so sort of you never know. Itself. Sometimes they're planned, sometimes they're spontaneous. So. so I feel like I'm getting too deep with you already. I want to maybe step back and just talk about who you are what kinds of photographs you take. Tell me about your training or your history as a photographer. Can okay. you fill in some of that biographical well, sure. information? Well, I'm 71. I'm retired now. Uh, most of these were taken before I retired. I've only really, really been a serious, you know, artsy-fartsy photographer for about oh, the last 20, 25 years. Before that, I just like everybody else, just took snapshots of stuff, you know. I got a really good camera for my high school graduation, but I didn't really do much with it in terms of artistic kind of photos. So if someone gave you a camera for your high school graduation, you must have already had a sense or had vocalized, uh, yeah. or was the camera just sort of the impetus? That was a long time ago, yeah. so I don't really, couldn't really tell you one way or the other. It wasn't until about 25 years ago I started doing more 
art type photographs. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you the big game changer. Were you changer. traveling before that, taking as you say snapshots? But did was it? Did you see them becoming more artistic rather than simply you or I capturing a memory? Prior to that, the idea of doing artistic photos didn't really cross my mind. I wasn't you know, part of the deal. I just was out taking pictures of whatever I saw that looked interesting, like most people do. But the game changer has been uh, YouTube. There are so many awesome photography tutorials on YouTube. Some wow. of these guys, there's photographers, you know, all different photographers from around the world that I follow and learn a lot from those guys. I'm completely self-taught other than, you know, what I learn on YouTube, but I've, you know, made my mistakes along the way. Yeah. But, uh, but that's been, that really took my photography up two or three levels. So that was the game changer, as you say. But then you also, I heard you mention that this image was part of a, a class? Or no, a I just, I belong to several photography groups. Can you and talk no, about that? Because I'm unaware of it. Like, I've been in a writing group for, a, is it yeah. sort of the same thing? Well, I guess, yeah, it's just a, a group of like-minded people, and somebody will say, hey, you're, we're going to do an outing to, in this case, it was a place called Sutro Tunnel, which is... Uh, yeah that drains the mines under Virginia City. Yeah. And this is the pond where the water drains into. Oh my gosh. So uh, we were out there. You can get close to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's right there. So uh, we were just out there around dawn and uh, I saw that picture. So, uh, but uh, I, I like to be around other photographers who know what they're doing. If you really want to get better at it, you need to be around people that are better than you are at something and because uh, you can learn from them and, and they can learn from you if you know things they don't because photography is just a vast you know, thing. it seems it seems well, vast to me you know i'm a point and shoot yeah. isn't that groovy kind of a guy so can you talk about if you're self-taught but then you're also finding these sort of peer mentors can you can you talk about an experience that you've had where this vastness was, you know, maybe condensed around something. For example, were, were, was, were there early lessons about lenses or, or color or composition? Oh yeah, there's, you know, there's just a ton of ways to look at almost anything. Uh -huh. So, uh, photography's a, it's about learning your equipment, so you don't have to stop and, and screw around and try to figure out, well, how do I get to do this? It's just automatic, boom, boom, boom. But it's also training your mind to see the image. When I'm in photography mode, I don't just look at the world like I normally do, or we, most people know. I look at the world like this. You yeah. know, I can see, a lot of times, I can see the final print. Even you before I push, yeah, but even, but no, I don't do that. <laughs> it's kind of, it's mental, you know. Yeah. Sometimes I do. Sometimes yeah. I will actually do that. Yeah, sure. And one of the tutorials I watched, the guy, he takes his, his uh, cell phone and he looks through there. And uh -huh. he, he looks at it and he, it kind of gives him a more uh -huh. um, isolated view of what it's going to be yeah. or what it could be. And the other thing, if you really want to, you know, get your work in art galleries, you've got to master Photoshop. There's just no way around it. And to me, that's more than half the fun. And what's you know? happening in Photoshop in your images? Well, you, you brighten them, you crop them, you do what you need to do. And, uh, and Photoshop's gotten to be pretty amazing. You know, we were talking earlier about some of the things we do that. That picture of the windmill up there? Yes. With the fence? Yeah. And the original photo, the fence is over here and the windmill's over here. I just chopped this part out, moved it over here, and just told Photoshop to fill in the middle. And you can't even tell where it filled it in. It's gotten that good. It's just amazing what it'll do. It's almost magic what, what Photoshop will do these days, if you know how to make yeah. it do that. Have you played with AI then? That is AI. That is. That's, that's it. it. That's called content generation. It's an AI uh -huh. content generation. And uh, 
He doesn't always get things right. You know, you've got to kind of get, so get the hang of it. So you give me a fence and a windmill at sun. No, I just, or... I just cropped this section out, moved it over where I wanted it, and now there's a line. You can see where the two. So I just drew a box around the line and say, fill that in, you know, uh, AI. And it, you, can't, you can't tell where that line ever was. But it's the same photo. My attitude on that is uh, AI is fair game if you just want to clean up a photo or something like that. If you want to start, um, well, there's basically two basic kinds of photography. There's photojournalism, and then there's artistic photography. And that's where the big debate comes amongst the photographers. You know, so people with the more photojournalistic background are like, well, you can't change anything, you know. And there's people that, that think cropping is cheating, so, you know. And then there's people that, you know, if, if it's meant to be an artistic piece, how you get to the end product is your business, you know. So if I wanted to put a dragon in that canoe, yeah, I could do that in about 10 minutes oh, flat. Man, you know? I, want, I want that. I want that <laughs> so, real bad, Bruce. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of gimmicky. You could do that. And I've tried a few times, you know. Yeah. So a friend from Indiana sent me a picture of a lake and with these people, so I put it in there. And I had a, a dragon coming down, and I had a shark coming up, and I had a dinosaur over here, and the senator. You know, it was fun to screw around yeah. with, but it wasn't artistic. It was just kind of dumb. So, you know, so I do wonder, do you think that philosophically you might feel otherwise about what you just described had you gone through the academy in any way? People think photography is one thing. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely not one thing. There are portrait photographers. That takes a set of lenses, tripods, lighting, all that stuff to do. I have no interest in taking pictures of people if I can help it, you know, so. Um, then you've got landscape photographers and they've got a different set of equipment and a different, different skill set. And then you've got straight photographers, which is a completely different skill set than the first two and a different set of equipment. And then the people that do macro photography and then they use the lenses that can get up close and personal. So at some point you kind of decide well, what things uh, appeal to me? What things do I have the most fun doing, you know? So, I mean, I'm not in this. I mean, I've, I've spent far more money on equipment than I've ever made selling my work, but uh, it's not why I do it, you know? So, so for the images you're taking, it sounds like all you need is your laptop for, you know, the, the processing. Uh -huh. You know, I forgot to... Uh, an apple that's pretty well tripped out. Yeah. It's got a lot of horsepower and you need it to be doing big images. Yeah. And the interesting thing is like the AI content generation, yeah. that's not done on your computer at home. That's done in the cloud. Uh -huh. it's, that's done on uh, Adobe's computers. Oh, wow. So if you don't have a, a connection, you can't do that. You can't use AI. Uh -huh. So uh, it's, it's a whole new world. So <laughs> do you have a studio that's full of your your images, or have you converted? I have them? A, a room in my house. It was a den. Yeah, I've got a wide format printer because I can. I printed all these myself, uh, and uh, and I've just got a, a desk and a computer. But then I've got places to store all the photo, uh, the photo paper, and the canvas. You know, because even the canvas rut can run through the printer. Yeah. And so I've got a, one room that's just completely devoted to camera gear and, you know, the printing, yeah. uh, what, what it takes to print and frames and things like uh -huh. that. So, so you've, you've spoken of different types of photography. Um, it seems to me that, that you participate mostly in what you're calling street photography and landscape. Landscape and street photography. Do some wildlife photography, but I do have a long lens and everything, you know. But that's a whole other set of skills that I really don't have at this point. Uh -huh. And the equipment and how they go and where they find sure. and all that stuff. So, uh. so represented here then are, as we say, landscape and street photographs. Mm -hmm. What places are represented? Or it seems like there's some Nevada, some California. Oh, yeah. Mostly the areas that I can get to fairly easily. Uh -huh. you know, the, the photograph of the two flyers on the end, that was taken in Golden Gate Park. 
oh, by uh, Stowe Lake. Uh -huh. um, the uh, windmill, that's over by Dillon Beach, over by oh, sure. Point Reyes, over uh -huh. on the coast. Sure. The little waterfall thing there, that's taken up in Tahoe City. Uh -huh. That's actually a little ditch going, going down past uh, uh, a couple of industrial buildings. Oh, wow. I mean, photos are where you find them. Yeah. You know? I'm just wandering around looking and I see this. You know, so I clean it up a little bit. But that sure. literally is a ditch. I had to, to remove things. I mean, there was like... Uh, garbage and stuff in here that you yeah. have to take out. So, uh, Does it occur to you then, so that would be a classic landscape sort of a in, in image, but had you left the garbage in, are you working towards that idealized vision of this small creek or, you know, do you consider what would happen if you spoke to the reality of it by leaving that? that I'm not a photojournalist, you know. And I don't so that's think, the difference. Yeah, that's the difference. You know, I was a photojournalist, I would have left everything in there. But I'm more interested in, in creating a piece of art. And a piece of art like that really shouldn't have uh, cigarette butts and uh, uh, gum wrappers and things yeah. in it, so, so I had take it out just to end up with a more aesthetically pleasing image rather than, you know, what I saw. And there's a big debate amongst photographers about, you know, what's cheating and what's not, particularly now that the AI content generation yeah. has come by. There's a huge firestorm of controversy right now. It's well, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm thinking to hear, to hear you talk, I'm thinking of like, just because I don't know a lot of photographers, but I'm thinking of that, you know, sort of more traditional Ansel Adams kind of feel mm. um, with something like what you're describing as yeah. well. Because I know that, that he was very particular, not about sitting at the computer because it didn't exist and taking it mm -hmm. out, but but assiduously framing that image to take this industrial piece mm -hmm. out of it. Whereas in the early, I want to say the early 70s, was it the new topographics movement where they were, they were very purposefully taking images of nature as they found it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's something to be said for that point of view, but... Uh... And there's a, for years there's been a controversy, what would Ansel Adams think of Photoshop? Yeah. And some people think, oh, he'd hate it. And most, most of the photographers I know think he'd love it. Because he spent thousands of hours in a dark room dodging and burning single prints, yeah. you know. And in Photoshop, he could do all that work one time and then just print it out from that point on. He wouldn't have to slave away with all the chemical fumes and things sure. in a dark room. You know? so, so an image, so an image like I'm seeing here, you went to out past Carson City and you saw this tree and you said you returned to it many times to figure First out. There's a couple times. So I, it, I feel like I'm learning about your process, you you are taking the time to see, to mm -hmm. find and to see, and then when you're back home, you're taking the time to revision what you've seen. Is that is that right? Well, basically, when you're out in the field, your experience tells you, okay, that. That has a lot of potential. That tree, it's just way up on the side of the hill. I see this tree and this notch in the rocks. I said, well, that could be a really good photo. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't find a good angle. You get down, there's houses in there and there's, there's power lines across. It's a really tough thing to get a picture of. So I finally figured out that if I went with a tel telephoto lens up on the hill away from I could get over the houses okay. and everything and shoot that. But that wasn't until the fourth time that I was there. The first three times were a complete bust. I'd get there and there'd be too many power lines. Yeah. And too, you know, it's like, okay, but I'm not going to give up. I mean, but you see, rather than the, the, the shot, you see 
the potential shot. You, you don't look at it what it is. You look at you, in your mind after if you've done this long enough, you see what it can be. I see. And so from the time you've taken that image to the time it reaches a framed piece on a wall in a show. How long does that take? It really depends on the image. I mean, there's some images I can clean up in 10 or 15 minutes, you uh -huh. know? And there's other images that would take a couple of hours worth of work to really get them. So you right. make four trips, you get the shot, and then maybe this is 15 minutes or was this an hour? Oh, that image there probably, that's probably two hours worth of work in uh -huh. Photoshop to get it just the way I want The way it you wanted yeah. it. And when you, so. when you find it, you know what you want, you know, you, yeah. you're like, that's the, it. The picture of the tree up there, that's probably only 20 or 30 minutes yeah. worth of work because it was pretty well yeah. just the way I wanted it when I pushed the shutter button. You know, it's yeah. right there. The clouds were there. And, you know, all that stuff is ready to roll. So, uh, you know, it really varies. Yeah. So, uh, well, thank you so much, Bruce. This has been, this has been great. Uh, and I, we're going to get to talk in a couple different ways uh, about these shots in, in okay. short form here. Because I'm interested in, like, salt shakers, boats, and trees. You know, how does this... How oh, does this all talking fit about together? The, yeah. the one over here? Yeah, yeah we, can, so, we can talk about that. Um, but, uh, in any case, thanks very much. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah so it's my pleasure. I love to talk about it.